Today's a bit of a sad day. Um, I've been living in the unit that I've been living in for a number of years, um, over eight years. And th over that eight year period, I've had a heart attack, I've had two strokes, I've had three bouts of cancer, and I have lost 75 pounds. So I've gone through a lot of, um, a lot of issues in my life since I moved here. Now, it's not because I, I'm living here, but um, my health uh, took a very uh, quickly spiraling downhill um, way i i just i i just got sick one thing after the other everything seemed to kind of like happen at the same time and i was spiraling downhill very very quickly and you know i really did think i didn't think that i would live to see 2023 and you know there's there's times that i sit back and i look at the things that have taken place in the past eight years and i think damn like I'm alive like I can't believe I'm still alive I went through a lot of issues and you know as you get up in age um, a lot of things start to decline I mean your cognitive functions decline your <laughs> like even my emotional wellness was being affected I was having uh, bouts of depression I wasn't able to deal with the fact that look at it I mean this is this is my new reality I went from having dark dark hair and um, you know <laughs> being very active i went to basically being in a wheelchair for uh, a matter of months i mean there was a period of time where i couldn't even take a shower by myself i had to have someone help so you know and and i spent six months in rehab i had to relearn how to walk i had to relearn how to walk up and down stairs um, i lost a lot of um i had a lot of problems with my eyes and you know these glasses i mean I don't, um, I still have issues with my eyes, okay? I still have issues with my vision, but my vision, you know when you go to the dollar store and you purchase those glasses, now think about it, right? I'm a senior and I'm a low income. And so, you know, you go to the dollar, dollar store and you buy glasses, right? Because they're cheap and I have a tendency to lose them a lot. So I go to the dollar store. Now I've stopped buying plastic glasses. That's just my little quirk now, but... I would go to dollar store and I would buy glasses all the time because they were cheap and I kept losing them, right? So I went from, um, you know how it tells the magnification. So I think I went from three to uh, 250 and then from 250 I went to 175 and now uh, the glasses that I'm able to use are 125. I think it's 125. But so my body is starting to kind of like recoup itself it's starting to recoup itself and you you do know that our cells um regenerate on their own sorry i had to check i thought somebody was at the door but um our, our cells regenerate so basically they renew themselves every 365 days now there's cells that renew themselves within a matter of weeks in a matter of days i mean think about it you get a cut and how quickly does that heal right so um yeah so our cells in our body regenerate after and basically every single solitary cell in our body will regenerate in 365 days so you know basically if you say that you're not the same person that you were when you were 20 you're right you're right because your body does renew itself it replenishes itself it uh cells die off and new cells are are come come into existence so and that's very very true look it up look it up don't don't be going on this rant and rave oh she doesn't know what she's talking about just look it up just look it up okay stop playing the cat and mouse game and look it up just look it up so today's been a rough day and like I was saying, I've been here for eight years and I've been through all those um, things in my life, health, health issues in my life. Well, today, another uh, situation came up where there, there were people in my life that meant a lot to me. Uh, they were neighbors, very close neighbors, almost like family, almost like family. And you would laugh because we're, we're two different cultures. Uh, they were East Indian and I am... Um, just me <laughs> anyhow so two completely different cultures but I learned so much from them and they were here through all the rough times they were here through you know thick and thin and um, they 
that young family had also gone through some issues in their life. They had gone through um, bouts with cancer, as I had. And um, so, you know, it was almost like it was a very strong connection, and I understood them, and they understood me. And, and they were like amazing, amazing native, or amazing neighbors, and I am going to miss them dearly. However, today was uh, the last day that they will be my neighbors. Uh, they have moved. They, they have moved on with their lives. They have um, just absolutely wonderful things are taking place in their life, and I wish them well. And that's all I can say about that because it is, you know, you have to be careful of what you put on the net. But I just wanted to kind of say that these people were, like, amazing. And... You know, sometimes family doesn't have to be family. It could be friends. It could be confidants. It could be, you know, your neighbors, right? And they feel like family because you get that close connection, especially, I mean, been living in the same apartment for over eight years. So there was a, a very strong connection there. And I felt protected. I mean, I'm in my 60s. I'm 63 years old. And you know, if anything went down, I always knew that I could pick up the phone and I could, you know, call my neighbor or I could text my neighbor and they would, you know, peek out their door if I needed them to or come over if I needed them to. And so I've lost that connection. And so that's another one of my support systems that has moved on with their life and they've moved to something better for them. And that's what I'm going to talk about is that, you know, as we get older, um, Things change. Things change. People change. People come and go. We change locations. We change um, capabilities. I mean, there are certain things in my life that I can't do. I mean, when I first moved in here, I moved in here by myself. I, I lifted my furniture on my own. I had no, uh, no friends, no family members, nobody. I did this move on my own, and I moved couches and beds. And, you know, over the the past years raising my children as a single mother I had no one to help me move most of the time I did the move and I would do the move myself and I would move the I would drive the truck I would move the stuff I would lift the furniture I mean I moved out of a, a three-bedroom apartment down three flights of stairs and moved right across uh, the right across um well, I can't say the country, but I moved uh, a matter of hours away and then had to unload it and then go back and get another load. So do you see what I'm saying is that it's been a long haul. And now in my 60s, if I was to move now, um, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I have the strength or the wherewithal to be able to lift all this furniture that I did in my younger years, right? So um, mind you, though, I was in my 50s when I moved here. So you know, so in my 50s, I was still pretty strong. And even now to this day in my 60s, if I had to, I, I know I could lift the furniture. But I tell you, it would take me a little bit longer to do it. It, it didn't take me as long before, uh, but now it would. So, you know, when you look at your life as you're getting older and you see that, yeah, support systems change and your capabilities change and your needs and your wants change and you know I was kind of looking at my life and I was thinking where do I want to be where do I want to be I mean I'm 63 how much time do I have left um you know, I could live another 10 years. I could live another three years. I could die tomorrow crossing the road, right? So you kind of look at your life and you realize your own mortality when things like this happen. You see people moving and, you know, seeing my neighbors move and, and feeling such, I felt sad. It was almost like seeing a family member leave. And, and I felt really sad. And it was it really affected me a lot. And I was thinking like, this is what it's like. And I'm not the only senior. There's a lot of seniors li like me who are isolated, who are alone, who don't have a support system around them. And, you know, back in the day, normally you would, uh, family members would take care of the elder parents, right? As the parents got older and older. And then, then all of a sudden this new modern age came in and there was uh, retirement homes. And then the, you know, the two parents, if your mother and father were alive and still together, they would move into a retirement home and they would um, take care of each other until the time came that they would pass, right? Well, try being a single senior, try being a single senior. And even dating for single seniors is difficult because 
nobody wants to um, basically adopt a partner who might have health issues and having to take care of their partner that you know perhaps wasn't the father of their children or the mother of their children and having to take care of that partner it makes it difficult it makes it difficult especially for seniors because you know it would be like you know being being 63 years old and adopting a i don't know a german shepherd you know as a puppy and having to you know wean them and having to potty train them and doing that whole thing again and at this stage of my life I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't know if I want that. I have a cat. My cat's well trained, and I know uh, his, um, you know, his routines, and he knows my routines. And when I put the lights out, he knows it's bedtime. And my cat is like humanized. It really is. It's an amazing cat. So whoever gets the cat after I pass is going to be a lucky person. However, that in itself is an issue. Because, you know, not only do you have to think about having a will and not, not only do you have to think about maybe life insurance or things like that, right? And who's going to get your furniture and who's, what, what clothes you're going to wear in the coffin and are you going to have a mask or, you know, all these things, right? But if you have pets and you pass, you need to ensure that those pets have some place to go that they are protected and they are well cared for. And, you know, at this stage, I don't know if I have anyone to leave my cat to. And so that's a fear. That is a fear for me because I love my, my little cat. I absolutely love Toby. He is uh, the light of my life right now. And, you know, he's protective. He's protective for a little tabby. If anyone comes to my door, he'll sit right in front of the door and ensure that he's there until either I open the door or... If I ignore it, then he comes and he sits right beside me on the couch right here beside me and won't move until I decide that that knock isn't going to be there anymore. Okay, so a lot of strange, strange little habits he's got, but he is my, uh, he is my full-time companion. So, but that's what I'm saying is as you get up in ages, okay, up in age, you have to look at your life in a whole new way. And you have to kind of like <laughs> plan. You have to plan for when it's your time. And I've been looking at my life through a fine, um, what would you say, a fine tooth comb. I've been looking at my life. I've been thinking, okay, what do I do with this? What do I do with that? And I basically told my kids, Come and get your stuff, the stuff that's going to be willed to you when I pass. Come and get it now. Enjoy it now while I'm alive and I can see you enjoy it, okay? And, you know, I just need the basic stuff. I mean, I need a, a small couch. I don't need a big couch like this. I don't need a massive table. I don't need uh, a king-size bed. I don't need those things. I don't even want them. They're material things and I don't even want them. The one thing I do want and I would love to have is a tiny home. And I have been trying to manifest that for years, for years. And it's just not seeming to work. But it would be nice. It would be nice to have a tiny home and just take the bare essentials. And, you know, like I told the kids, come and get it. Come and get this stuff. And you enjoy it. You enjoy it because I don't need it. I don't need it anymore. I would be happy with, you know, a tiny little, uh, well, I wouldn't say a trailer, but like a tiny home. Um, a tiny home on a foundation because I need that stability. I don't know why. It's just kind of like a psychological thing for me. But I was kind of thinking that, yeah, like basically tell the kids, come and get the stuff and I will downsize and I will live in a tiny home. But unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have a tiny home, home, nor do I have the funds to get a tiny home. Now, I do know a lady, and I watch her on YouTube, and she's a, she's a senior, and she just purchased uh, a fifth wheel, I think. But she's living in, um, in the States, in a state where it's warm, where she can um, live in a, in a trailer. But where I am in Canada, you can't. It would just cost me too much on heating, and I just, I can't afford it as it is, right? So, um, yeah, so I'm kind of thinking, I'm looking at my life, and I'm thinking, geez, I need to... I need to clear some of this clutter. And that, I find, is where a lot of us seniors, once you hit over 50, you're starting to think, okay, I got to start doing this now. I got to start doing this now. And uh, 
just watching my my friends move and packing up their stuff and taking their stuff and there was only two of them a husband and a wife and they moved their stuff together as a team and I was thinking you know let's say I do find something smaller and I am able to move I don't have that second partner to help me and I can't afford a moving company. So, and everyone I know is working. They're all they're all young. I mean, certainly even my children would be um, at their jobs. And so, and they work shift work. They're essential workers, all of them. And so I wouldn't have the option of having um, a strong support system to help me move. So that's one of my major obstacles right now in order to move on with my life, in order to, like even if I did find a smaller apartment, I would have to look at the fact that I have to find someone or be able to move, have someone to help me move. So, you know, we're all dealing with this as we're getting older, but I'm finding that, I don't want to particularly say this because I don't want to uh, point at, let's say, my kids or anyone and say that they're doing this. But, you know, I see it sometimes. I see it sometimes where as a senior, not not just me, with my friends, with uh, people I know, where you have children and you have friends and you have, you know, people that you know, but they have lives, right? And so as you get older... You kind of get, what's the word, <laughs> not just isolated, but you get, do you get forgotten about? You're the last uh, number on that list of to-dos, right? You're the very last number. Um, you know, a lot of the times, and I, and I complain about this a lot, you know, complain about, uh, you know, perhaps not getting a phone call. No one calling me and saying, hey, you know, hey, how you doing today? How's everything going today? Or, what are you planning on doing this week? Or what you doing today, right? And so the senior support system that they have in place, a lot of places have like home support and they have like uh, like Bayshore and things like that. They have uh, particular individuals that will take a list of numbers for seniors and they will do supportive phone calls. And when I was working in the field, and I've worked a lot of different different fields but I did do supportive uh, phone calls for um, for seniors and I did that on my own time and I did it as a volunteer and I didn't realize how important it was I didn't realize how important it was until you know what just today just today I, I looked at it and I was thinking geez I can understand now why uh, supportive phone calls or a, a supportive visit just dropping by uh, you know to find out if someone's doing okay okay especially a senior why that is so so important it's so important especially as you're getting up in ages right now when my own um, authority figure uh, in my life when when she uh, was up in age, I always prayed that she would leave. She was living in her own home, but I always wished for her to leave that home, even though it was beautiful and she had a, a garden and she had a lot of space and a beautiful home and furnishings and had the freedom of owning her own house. I didn't see it that way. I seen it as a sense of isolation, a sense of forced dependency on other people. I seen it as um, dangerous because of the fact that uh, as a senior, this person was living alone, and if they fell or had a problem, and as they got older, apparently that was that was an issue. Um, and so I seen it as um, dangerous. I seen. Having the perfect life and the perfect home and having your own space as a senior, I seen that as dangerous for this particular authority figure in my life. And so, you know, I used to think, I used to kind of pray to the big guy up above, please see fit to uh, let this particular person um, find stability where there are other people, other seniors, a long-term care unit, a retirement home. So someplace where they felt secure and they felt safe and they weren't um, isolated. And so, you know, I'm looking at my life and I'm thinking, <laughs> this is like, this is like so contradictory because I don't want that. But for that particular authority figure in my life, I did want it because they had always been isolated their whole life. They had always been isolated, particularly when they were in their um, early years. Okay. They were isolated and, you know, um, 
I wanted that person to have a, a connection to other people and to feel like part of a group, to feel supported. And so for them, I thought that would be the perfect option. And in fact, it did happen that way. Um, and that person was able to uh, go on outings and socialize with their neighbors and their they made new friends and they weren't as isolated anymore. They did have health issues, but they weren't isolated. And so I'm looking at my life and I'm looking at their life and I'm thinking, hmm, like, is that going to be me? Is that going to be something that I'm going to have to deal with as I get older? And, you know, I kind of thought, like, where I am now, I'm hours away from any support system that would be a personal support system, friends or family members or even my children. I'm hours away from them. And so... Um, I'm kind of looking at him thinking, geez, God, I don't want to, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be isolated, but I don't want to live in a retirement home. And I sure as heck don't want to go to a long-term care unit. So I am trying to take care of my health. And you know, this is about my stroke journey. This is about the fact that I had a heart attack and I had stroke and cancer. And so you know, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person that is um, forced, that forced dependency on anyone, whether it be my children, my friends, whether it be long-term care, whether it be a nurse, a doctor, I don't care. I don't want that. I don't want that. And I am going to work as hard as I can to keep my health um, as good as I can. Now, I still have high blood pressure. Um, it is a danger zone for me, especially when it's hot. So as we're getting into the cooler seasons, it, it kind of, um, it takes a lot of that uh, danger element out of my life, okay? So the cool weather is better for me. And so, and I love to walk in the wintertime because I feel great. It makes me feel great. However, you do have to worry about slipping and that's all I'd need is to break a leg or a hip, right? So um, I have to be careful with that. But, you know, today was kind of like an eye opener and I'm seeing how things move forward. Whether or not, you know, whether... Um, I'm capable or I'm not capable or I'm bedridden or I'm in a wheelchair, okay? Life will continue either with me or without me. I'm There's nothing special about me that is going to stop the world from turning, right? The world is going to continue to turn as I age and as maybe I, you know, um, develop some type of illness. So, I don't know, today just kind of made me... Uh, sit up and take notice so but I am going to get back to reading my book I'm reading uh, nature's medicine I got this at the uh, thrift store for a dollar fifty and it is an amazing 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 book um, yeah so I'm reading little uh, bits and pieces of it about the supplements that I take on my own uh, I'm reading up to see if indeed I'm taking the right one so I like to keep myself educated about my health I like to find out any new um, holistic methods that have been developed or even um, in mainstream medicine. Um, I like to find out anything that has been, you know, put out there by either the FDA or Health Canada. Okay, so I like to keep myself informed and that's going to help me on this healing journey. But, you know, today was mostly about... Um, the psychological and the emotional uh, journey when it comes to healing. So there is a part of me that um, would like to, right at this point, have a little cry, <laughs> a little uh, bit of self-pity, right? A little bit of like, here I am by myself, everybody I know is leaving. There is not one person on the floor that I live on that I know. And I used to know them all, all of them. And I mean, we have what, like 12, 13 apartments on this one floor. I used to know them all. It was like a tiny little, it was like a tiny little uh, community, a tiny home community in this apartment on this floor. Everybody knew everybody and we helped each other out. If anyone was short on uh, food or groceries or whatever, we were always there for each other. And now that support system has dwindled. It has dwindled very 
fast, very fast. And I can see being a senior that a lot of the times our support network will dwindle. So you have to be prepared for that and you have to plan for that. So I shall see you on the next video. The good Lord be willing. Namaste. Bye.